My name is Dana Monsies. I'm a dietitian, nutritionist, and body image coach, and I'm the creator of Real Food with Dana, the Instagram, the website, the brand, and then also the Real Talk with Dana podcast. Um, So I want to get started today talking about stress because let's be honest, that is the number one thing on everyone's minds right now. Um, If not the number one thing, it's like an overwhelming just like presence that you feel all the time. And I want to talk about how we can manage this. And the first thing that you need to do in order to do that is to figure out Where is the stress coming from? And you're like, Dana, duh, literally turn on the news and you can see where all of the stress is coming from. But it's not just that, right? There are a lot of other things that are going on and it's also multifactorial and multi-layered as well. So when we're thinking about stress, I want you guys to think about two things. There are organic stressors, which is like the stress itself. And then there is perceived stress also. So if we think about What are the organic stressors during this time? And this doesn't mean like chemical free stressors, right? This means like things like, okay, you're the fact that you're living through some global trauma right now. We're living through a global pandemic, which is probably something that not many people can say that they've ever lived through before, right? If anyone. Um, And then also think about the stress that goes along with working from home, being thrown out of your routine. Now you're not in the office, you're not in the gym, you're not going all of the places that you're normally going. You're not only avoiding all of those things because we're supposed to and you're not allowed to, but you're also at home with significant others, family, depending on who you live with, friends, roommates, pets, kids, all over the place. And Just the fact of transitioning to a new normal, whether it's like a move or going on a vacation, there is a little bit of organic stress there because it's something different that you're not used to. And this happens to be a very stressful situation, right? And then there's also, not that I need to remind you, worrying about are you going to keep your job, worrying about your friends and family, worrying about getting sick or others getting sick or you getting others sick, right? On top of that, think about if you have a chronic illness or a... Um, predisposing condition that they're talking about um, or any other health condition that you might be dealing with during this time that's probably flaring up a little bit. Maybe something like food sensitivities, rheumatoid arthritis, anxiety, depression, anything like that. And then these are like pandemic specific and this isn't even all of them. But then also thinking about what are the other things that are on your plate, right? Like Having a boss who's expecting you to be 100% productive right now, even though it's near impossible to do that, given that you have the kids at home, you've got whoever else at home. There are other things that we're trying to navigate in this like new world. And then if your boss is an a-hole to begin with, that's also not going to help, right? That's causing a flare-up of all of the stress hormones that we're experiencing also at any given time, let alone during a pandemic, when your stress bucket right now is pretty full and to the point where it's almost going to start overflowing. And then other times, non-pandemic times, even just the fact of like getting struck in traffic can be very stressful. Haha, ha, remember when we used to get stuck in traffic because we used to be able to drive places. Um, and then on top of any other anxiety, stress, mental health challenges that you might be having in your regular life. So of course you're really stressed out. Of course this feels like oscillating between a low grade to a high grade panic attack every single day because we all have our regular life stressors that we deal with and sometimes don't deal with super well. But then on top of everything that's going on currently, it's no wonder that we're all feeling completely stressed out and just like not knowing what to do. Um, So action item number one for you guys is I want you to write down what are all of the organic stressors that you have in your life right now. And think about everything from, oh my gosh, it's so hard to get the kids to actually sit down to do their schoolwork from home. Or I'm like trying to navigate having a toddler at home 24 hours a day when they're used to going to daycare. Or like, I feel bad about going outside because I don't have a mask. What am I supposed to do? You know, every single thing from the biggest thing, hello, coronavirus, to what you might think is the smallest thing Everything is adding to your bucket. And on a normal day, the little things might not get to you, but it might feel weird that like, you know, if one little thing goes wrong, one of these days you're like, oh my God, if one more thing happens, I'm going to pull all my hair out. That's because our buckets are pretty full right now. And then 
you might be thinking, well, some people internalize stress a lot harder and some people um, don't internalize it as much and they seem to just let things like glance off of them. So this is perceived stress, right? So organic stressors are the actual things that are stressing us out and perceived stress is how much they affect you, right? So perceived stress is more about your feelings about the lack of control or the amount of stress or the unpredictability about the actual stressors more than the stressors themselves. So it's your reaction to the stressors that's creating this level of perceived stress in you. This is why for some people, stress affects them in different ways, some more than others, and different things will affect you differently than someone else. So if you find your thoughts spiraling to like what could happen or like deciding that awful things are inevitable, this is the meaning of like perceived stress. So pause the video again. Um, what I want you to do now is in addition to all of your organic stressors, I want you to add your perceived stress as well. So now that you're back, <laughs> let's talk about food because let's be honest, when you guys heard the title of this video, you were probably like, all right, let's talk about food because food can play a big part in the equation of stress addition, and also stress reduction. So first I want to talk about where food can add stress because let's be honest, food is a big stressor right now. So in general, um, the number one food stressor for a lot of people that I see um, aside from like food scarcity or food insecurity is dieting and restriction. They are a stress on the body physical, mental, emotional stress, all of the buckets there. But then also so is eating foods that don't agree with your body. So if it's a food allergy, it's a food intolerance, if you have a food sensitivity, or that make your chronic illness symptoms flare up due to a certain food. But one thing I want you to think about here is when we're thinking about stress and especially perceived stress, right? The physical reaction to certain foods, and disclaimer, we're not talking about allergies here, the physical reaction that you might be experiencing due to eating certain foods might be actually caused by, or at least made worse by, the mentality or the opinion that you have attached to these foods. So for example, if you have been on, let's say like a keto diet for a long time, then you are not allowed to have you know over X amount of carbs every single day. Most likely, you then associate carbohydrates in grams over, you know, whatever amount with weight gain, with being unhealthy, with not curing all of these things that you've like see improvements that you've seen on keto, right? The reverse of that is what you now associate with carbohydrates. So if you feel like, okay, anytime I eat a sweet potato, I just feel so bloated or I feel, you know, any of the symptoms that fill in the blank, right? It's different for everyone. You then associate that with carbohydrates or with the sweet potato. But what I'm wondering is, and I've seen this with many of my clinical nutrition clients, is that the mentality that we have around that food, all of those thoughts that are swirling around in your head are creating this stressed out state in your body. Your body's now not primed to receive and assimilate and digest those foods in the optimal way. So it can actually be causing things like bloating, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation, because your body's not ready to digest those because of the stress that we've created that we associate with that food. So yes, it can definitely be, you know, if you've got like a parasite, if you've got bacterial overgrowth, if you have a food intolerance or an allergy, obviously, your body's physically going to negatively react to that food. But then on top of that, or for some people, that aside because that's not the case many more people think they have food sensitivities than the amount of people who actually do have food sensitivities just because the tests are very popular right now um think about what about the mental emotional piece here and how is that causing additional stress so We've kind of been dancing around this topic for a little bit, but um, I wanna get a little bit nerdy here and talk about the nervous system because the nervous system is the root of all of this. We're talking about stress, we're talking about fight or flight, which is the sympathetic branch of the nervous system, or the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest mode. And which one do you think you want to be in if you want to actually digest your food, right? Aside from that, which one do you think we are all in almost constantly right now, unless you're actively doing work to relax yourself and switch 
to rest and digest because these two things are mutually exclusive. You can't be in both of them at the same time. You're either in fight or flight or you're in rest and digest. So when we're in fight or flight due to a global pandemic or any of the other stressors that we've mentioned so far, or if we feel like we shouldn't be eating these foods, if these foods are unhealthy, and we're going to get into that later also, your body is not primed to digest and absorb food properly if you're stressed or in the presence of inflammation, which causes stress also, or if you're stressed because you feel like you shouldn't be eating that food. When the body is in rest and digest mode, your stomach is producing adequate adequate stomach acid to break down proteins. Your gallbladder is releasing bile to help you uh, break down fats, dietary fats. And then your small intestine is the house, the home of most of the rest of your digestive enzymes that are going to break down the remainder. So all of the carbohydrates, the fruits and vegetables, and also helps finish off a little bit of the digestive process before it is carried through the rest of your GI system. So if those things aren't working, then what do you think is going to happen when you eat food? Because also when you're stressed, you're probably not chewing enough, which means you're swallowing food more whole than you normally would, which means your body's already going to have a hard time to break these things down. And now you don't have enough stomach acid. You don't have enough bile. You don't have enough digestive enzymes. Your stomach feels like it's in knots. What do you think is going to happen to that food? It's not really going to be digested, broken down, assimilated, or basically taking the nutrients from that food into your body so you can use those nutrients for fuel, for energy, for stress management, for immunity, for any of those things. So when you're really stressed out and you're eating, no matter what foods they are, your body's not really getting those nutrients. It's not really doing the best it can with those things. So of course you're going to experience things like inflammation and uh, maldigestion and malabsorption and diarrhea and constipation and bloating and heartburn and skin conditions and all of these other things, not even including when you have a chronic illness or you need to manage your chronic symptoms with certain foods or stress management. This is making all of those symptoms worse. So now that you understand physiologically what's happening there, um, I want to talk about why we're all so stressed about food in particular right now? Like, why do we have so much anxiety around food during this crisis? Because this is a new thing, right? And like I mentioned before, new things are stressful. Even if it's a good kind of stress, it still adds to your bucket. So when we're thinking about quarantine, isolation, all of the buzzwords of today, right? So there is this threat of future restriction. We don't know when we're going to be able to go to the grocery store again. We don't know if and when we go to the grocery store, they're going to have the things we need. So there's a limited availability to get food. We're also all trying to leave our houses as little as possible, unless you're an essential worker. And even then you're trying to leave your house as little as possible to bring as little exposure, potential exposure as possible. And then there's limited availability when you finally do get to the store, or if you're trying to order online, you can't get a delivery window. It's all of the things, right? So it's the access to food is limited. So there's this threat of future restriction. There's a threat of restriction right now. So it's kind of like when your body's on a diet. And uh, we know that the body doesn't love that. And that creates a source of stress in the body. But in addition to that, while there's limited access to food at the grocery store, most people have unlimited access to food at home of the foods that you do have. And this is different because if you're not used to working from home like I do, you're not used to having food around all the time and this is causing people to go a little insane because we're so used to, for many people, sticking to our meal prep, sticking to our diet, sticking to our whatever and we have set meal times and you know we are used to following the rules and doing all of these things and now all that's kind of up in the air because we're at home and it's different. But then there's also the threat of, well, what if what if I don't have enough food at home? What do I do? What if I can't go get more food? And so it's all of these thoughts swirling around. And of course, it's very confusing and very stressful. And then going beyond that, the availability of quarantine-friendly foods are mostly shelf-stable, pantry-stable, freezer-stable. Many of these foods, and I'm going to make an assumption here because this is true for many of my clients, um, many of these foods are probably on your no or limit or unhealthy list. They were not included on any of the diets that you've done, right? 
Um, and that creates a lot of anxiety for people too because they feel like they shouldn't be eating those foods or you feel like you shouldn't be eating those foods in more than moderate amounts or you know any of these statements that we tend to make about food. And so that's creating another stress as well. And then we're feeling unhealthy because we're eating more foods that we feel like we shouldn't be eating or we're eating more of these foods that we shouldn't be eating or we feel like we're overeating treats because we're stressed out or we're eating, we feel like we're binge eating or we're trying to restrict and then we get so stressed that we then end up binging or overeating and it's just like a whole vicious circle. So there's also a lot of like mindless or distracted eating going on because we're trying to distract ourselves from the craziness that's going on. There's a lot of stress or emotional eating, like I mentioned, because there is this perceived food scarcity from the threat of future restriction. We don't know if I eat all my quarantine snacks today, if I'm going to be able to refill those. And that is scary, right? So there's a lot of feelings of stress, of anxiousness, of feeling out of control, of uncertainty. And quite understandably, a lot of us are also trying to numb all of these emotions by staying as busy as possible so that we don't have to feel that. Because we feel that if we actually sat down and like felt all the feels, we would explode or have a panic attack, which feels like a very real possibility, right? And then on top of all of that, so I hope you guys are now understanding why you're feeling so stressed around food in particular, but then on top of all that, a lot of us are creating a lot more unnecessary, in my opinion, stress about food. So we're creating even more for ourselves by creating these rules for ourselves that we're trying to stick to restrictive diets or beat ourselves up if we can't stick to our like regular meal prep schedule, we can't stick to our regular food schedule, the list of foods we normally eat. We're creating even more stress by feeling bad and beating ourselves up about that when really we're just doing the best we can, right? Other people creating another stress, are saying that this is a great time to dial in your nutrition and lose a lot of weight before summer. It's not. This is not a good time to do that. I'm just going to, as a dietitian nutritionist, please take my advice. Take that mentality out. This is not a great time to do that. Um, And then a lot of people are also trying to not eat any processed food or not eat any treats or not eat any sugar or not eat any, you know, fill in the blank. That in itself is also creating a lot of stress because if you have these foods around already all the time, they're in your house and then you say, okay, I'm not allowed to eat these because I'm trying to lose weight or like I shouldn't be eating those or I shouldn't be eating after 7 p.m. or I shouldn't, you know, adding all these rules for yourself. As soon as you tell your brain you can't have something or you shouldn't be doing something, what do you think the number one thing that your brain is going to go to when you're stressed out? that thing that you just said you couldn't do, no matter what it is. You tell yourself you can't eat strawberries. That's all you're going to think about all day. Most of the time, people aren't saying strawberries. It's like chocolate or treats or brownies or cookies or cereal or whatever the quarantine foods you have available are. And let's get to the root of this, right? Like people are afraid of being unhealthy. If one of the things that you value is health, which I'm sure all of you do because you're on a meal prep page, right? You might feel like, Many of the foods that are available to you right now, the pantry foods, the freezer foods, the non-fresh foods, might be of lesser nutritional value like health-wise, or you might feel like they're bad foods or they're no foods or off-limits foods. And then we're also, everyone is afraid of gaining weight because we feel like we can't stick to our regular exercise or food routines. All of these things that I just mentioned are adding even more stressors on top of what we already have. Your bucket is now overflowing. So of course we're experiencing this low grade to high grade panic attack. Of course you're having digestive issues. Of course you can't sleep. Of course you're having skin issues. Of course you feel like you wanna pull your hair out every day because look at all the things that I just listed and that doesn't even include any of the things that you guys listed on your lists. So next step in your action steps here, go back to your list, Add in some of the things that I just mentioned. Are you trying to stick to a diet? Are you trying to push yourself to do like high intensity interval training every day? Are you trying to work out every day? Are you forcing yourself to work out every day? Are you eliminating or saying you shouldn't be eating certain foods or you shouldn't be eating over certain amounts of certain foods? What rules are you making for yourself? And then taken in the context of all of the stress that we have been talking about, how is that adding to your bucket? 
Okay, so after you've done your action step of going back to your stress bucket list, adding in any stresses or anxieties that you've been having around food, these can be quarantine specific or just like in general. So what do we do about it, right? Like how can we take some of this stress off of our plates? What can we start doing right now to start feeling just a little bit more okay with the fact that we have no control over a lot of what's going on right now, and that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people, most people, I would say. Um, And it's not like we're going to be okay with the situation, like everything is fine, Um, unless you're thinking about that little meme of the dog who's drinking coffee with his house on fire in the background, because that's kind of what everything feels like right now. Um, But it's more of how can you feel a little bit more okay given all of the uncertainty and stress right now. And I'm going to give you guys a whole action guide later, like a little pretty PDF of things that you can add into your life to hopefully manage some of the stress. But we're going to get to that later. Specifically on the food piece, how can we start to feel better about this stuff? Neutralizing nutrition. This is one of the main things that I do in my practice with my clients and reminding people, especially during this time, that yes, it is possible and probable to get adequate amounts of high quality nutrition to your to support your energy, to support your immune system, your stress response, etc., all the things you need by eating primarily canned or frozen foods or shelf stable foods. You can do that. People always say like, "Oh, fresh is best." But did you actually know that frozen vegetables are flash frozen at peak freshness? So you're getting all of those vitamins and nutrients. Like, no, eating soggy vegetables doesn't taste great. But also, this is a great time to experiment learning how to prepare freezer vegetables different ways. I roasted a pan of broccoli yesterday from frozen, and it turned out great. So that's another thing that you can think about. Um, So if you do have fresh foods, it's also fine to kind of come up with a game plan. Like if you just went to the grocery store and you've got some fresh food, you've got mostly pantry, mostly freezer, it's totally fine to eat your fresh food first. I would actually suggest that you do that because the fresh food is going to go bad faster, obviously, than the freezer or the pantry food. And one thing that I would also mention and suggest that you add in is to try and get your nutritional baseline where possible. So the way that you can do that is because we mentioned a lot of people are like emotional eating and stress eating and people feel out of control because they've been eating canned or freezer or processed foods for three, four meals a day now. And that doesn't feel great to a lot of people like physically and then also the anxiety that goes along with that. So it's like the organic stress and the perceived stress, right? But One thing that you can do is instead of going the, okay, I'm just going to go on a diet. I'm just going to restrict. I shouldn't be eating these foods. Get them all out of the house. I'm going to eat it all now so I don't have to think about it anymore. That's not going to help in the long term. What you can think about is instead adding in foods that you know make you feel really good. So trying to add in fruits and vegetables and other foods that you know will make you feel good where you can, not as a diet, not as a mandate. This is like, oh, you're having cereal for breakfast. Why don't we include some fruit there? Or like, oh, you're having some, you know, chicken and pasta, whatever for lunch. Why don't we add a salad on the side? So then you can get in some more nutrients and you can start to feel better from a cellular level. Because if we're thinking about clinical nutrition on a biochemical level, there are certain vitamins and nutrients that your body needs every day, or at least on like a weekly basis in order to help you function at your best. On top of that, with all of the stress that we have going on, your body's becoming depleted of all of the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that your body needs to help deal with stress. So the more that we can replenish that in an adding in abundance kind of way, rather than a, I'm not going to eat any of these things. You're such a bad person for eating chocolate. Like get it all out of your house. Instead of that, because as soon as we do that, that's all you think about, right? Is trying to add in what nutrient dense foods where you can because we know that eating like processed food all day or fast food all day or like binging on cookies every day makes you feel horrible does that make cookies a bad food does that mean you shouldn't eat cookies during this time does that mean you should only limit yourself to one or two cookies every single day no in my practice and hopefully you guys are getting this um there's no morality around food there are no good or bad foods there's no foods that are morally superior to other ones it doesn't make you a good person for eating a salad and a bad person for eating ice cream doesn't mean that you should eat those foods every day 
if you want to. Does it mean you should be eating those foods all day, every single day? That's up to you, but you're probably going to feel like crap if you do. So my suggestion would be try and add in more nutrient-dense foods where possible instead of taking the restrictive dieting approach. So now let's go back and talk about you got your whole stress list here. You got a lot of things here, and that's okay. So now, next action step here, I want you to think about what stress can you eliminate? What stress can you minimize? The news. What stress can you not get rid of? The pandemic. But you can manage the way that you internalize it by adding in some stress management behaviors. The number one thing that I'm going to recommend you guys do, and if you do nothing else following this video, I would please do this because it will make a huge difference in your life. Get off the news as much as possible. Obviously, you want to stay informed about what's going on, but checking the news every hour just to see the count of the number of people that have the virus in the world is not going to do anything for your stress levels, and it's not going to make a difference in your everyday life if you're doing that every hour of the day, okay? Unless you're the head of the CDC, that's probably something that you need to know. But you don't need to be checking the news all the time. I would highly recommend doing like a morning download and then an evening download, Two things to think about there. You don't want to start off the day in a highly stressed out state. If you've got kids running around, you're already stressed out. You don't need to be scrolling through the news right first thing when you get up out of bed because you're like, oh my God, you know, this many people died and this is happening and oh my God, this and oh my God, this. It's like, wait until you've gotten everyone settled down. Maybe you've had breakfast, maybe right before you start working or right after you start working. Good time to check the news because you can kind of distract yourself afterwards with work. And then same thing when you're going to bed. We are all having a really hard time sleeping right now due to the complete anxiety and stress around everything. You don't need to add to your monkey mind of everything that's going on. I call monkey mind when you have so many thoughts going around in your head that you can't sleep. You don't need to add to that by looking at the news right before you go to bed. So maybe like around dinner time and then you shut it down for the rest of the night. Um, In that vein, I would also highly recommend getting off social media as much as possible. Yes, you want to check in on friends and family, but I would recommend you do that on FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Zoom, whatever you want to do. Now is a great time to do a social media cleanse or detox and unfollow all of the accounts that make you feel like you should be doing something that you're not. Or... We, there are all those people out there right now that are like, I'm redoing my house. I'm buying all of these plants. I'm painting a Picasso. Like, you know, they're trying to be productive to the extreme. Learn a new language, whatever. If you're seeing that and that's making you feel more stressed out, you don't need to be a party to that. That's their coping mechanism and you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes over there. That could be the way that they're managing their anxiety because it feels out of control. You have no idea. So just... Do you know you the best? I don't know you the best. You're the person who knows you the best. So you need to figure out what is the amount of time on social media that you can reasonably spend without feeling like you're caught in the comparison trap or you're going to lose your mind, right? What's the same thing with the news is like how much balance out, how much you want to be informed with how much you feel like you want to lose your mind and you got to find the middle ground there. So along with the social media stuff is try to, as best you can, Um, stop comparing yourself to other people. And like I mentioned, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. You have no idea what other people are dealing with either. And so comparing yourself to their situation isn't going to help you at all because it's really not a comparison at all. It might seem like on the surface, like, oh, you know, I've got a husband and two kids and a dog and like I still have my job and, you know, we work relatively in the same field. Even then, your lives are completely different. Your history of how you manage stress is completely different. Your coping mechanisms are completely different. And this is what we're going to be talking about later. So please stop comparing yourself because that's only going to add more stress to your plate. Um, And then speaking of that, stop forcing yourself to be productive and excessively productive every second of every day to make this quarantine like worth it. So do your best to be productive where you can during work because that's kind of what you have to do unless you're unemployed and then you don't have to do that right now. But say you finish work or you finish like looking for jobs or whatever you've done, right, or applying for unemployment or for federal grants or loans or anything like that, taking care of your kids, being a full-time stay-at-home parent or aunt or uncle or friend, whatever it is, 
you don't then have to paint your whole house. You don't have to clean your whole house. You don't have to do learn a new language, paint a masterpiece, any of these things, unless that's truly therapeutic and relaxing for you. But don't feel like you have to do every single project that you've been putting off for the last couple of years because now you have time to do that. Now you also have a stress level of 175 when it might normally only be 50. So it's harder to take on new projects. It's harder to do new things because again, those are another stress, right? So in that light, please stop beating yourself up for expecting that you can get as much done as you normally can. Because again, our underlying stress level right now is so high that sometimes if you were, you know, normally at work and you're like, oh, like, let's go to lunch with my colleagues and whatever. Sometimes now that normal time, obviously we can't go out to lunch with our colleagues, but it's like, you just want to crawl in a hole and cry or like watch a reality TV show that distracts you completely from what's going on or like reading a book that helps you escape. Like your coping mechanism is going to be different right now. And that's okay. I want to talk about exercise for a little bit. Um, a lot of what I do is the intersection of nutrition and body image coaching and then also exercise as well. So um, I've been a swim coach for the last 10 years and I'm also a certified um, CrossFit coach and been doing that for a couple of years. So I try and bring those two things together. Um, and I know this might sound strange coming from someone who's trained in CrossFit, but now is the absolute worst time to be doing high intensity, high intensity interval training, HIIT, CrossFit style workouts, anything that after you do it leaves you on the floor panting. And I know there are going to be some people out there like, but I feel so good after that. You feel so good after that because of the rush of endorphins, which you don't need to do high intensity interval training to do, but also because you're getting a temporary release of cortisol, which is the hormone that is released along with adrenaline and epinephrine anytime you're in the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight state. Your cortisol right now is already so high that doing another high intensity interval training, intense workout, whatever, is going to make your bucket overflow. It's actually going to add more perceived and organic stress to your plate. This isn't to say I don't want you to move at all. Movement is a great way to do some self-care and like mental fitness, right, for mental health. But I would highly recommend getting some gentle movement in, whether that's yoga or walking or biking, jogging if you like it, doing a body weight workout, but not, again, ending up panting on the floor when you're done. Um, also, please, as best you can, um, start working on giving yourself a little bit of grace and compassion and not forcing yourself to follow your regular food routine to a T or beating yourself up for eating other foods. Again, that's only going to add to your stress bucket. Um, and kind of accept that nothing is going to be perfect during this time. If you're a perfectionist, this is going to be really hard. Um, I would also, I highly recommend therapy to almost all of my clients. This is a really great time to talk to someone. Um, there are a lot of great online therapy options and a lot of practitioners are doing virtual. So would highly recommend that if you're having a lot of trouble with that. Um, and then finally, embracing that we have almost no control in this. And that's really hard to accept, but everything is going to be okay in the end. And you need to figure out how can you help yourself get towards that end, knowing that we can't make all this stress go away. And then also thinking about how like, if you don't do any of these things during quarantine, you're going to be okay in the sense of like, if you don't learn a new skill, if you don't become a master chef, if you don't learn a new language, if you don't paint your whole house, clean your whole house, do all of the household tasks that you've been putting off forever, you're going to be fine. Um, so now little pause here. Um, I want to talk about what about the other side? Like one, what about adding in nutrition for stress management instead of adding stress to your plate with food and nutrition, right? Um, and then also other ways to manage the stress and get in some self-care. So I call these coping strategies and I'm going to give you guys um, a PDF that goes with this to give you like a bunch of different ideas. But one thing that I would like you to pause the video and think about, here's my other action step for you. Um, and you can post this in the comments as well. Any of the questions or prompts that I've given you so far. Um, think about things that you know work for you when you're really stressed out that can help you bring the stress level down. Because everyone is unique and everything, every, everything everyone puts down might be different. 
Because again, only you know you best. So I want you to think about that. Okay, so now that you've hopefully paused the video, taking a little time to think about it, um, I'm gonna talk about a couple of ways that you can manage the stress add to your self-care bucket, bring the stress bucket down, um, and feel free to add some of these to your list as well. Um, so you might roll your eyes, but meditation is the one of the best things that you can do right now. Even if you're just taking three deep breaths before you start eating, that can do wonders to bring you from fight or flight to bring you to rest and digest mode in terms of minimizing symptoms that you're going to be experiencing from the stress during eating or before eating. Um, meditation is a great tool for that just to disconnect from the world and to kind of like give yourself a chance to actually absorb and observe all of the thoughts that are coming around. And there are many different apps for that. You guys probably don't even need to me to tell you, but there's stuff like um, Audible has meditations, which is the audiobook app, which is also another great one. If you want to listen to books for stress management, that's really fun. Um, there's like... Um, Headspace, Calm, I know there's a bunch of them. Insight Timer, I think is one also. Um, then getting in some gentle movement, like I mentioned before, like yoga or going for a walk in the park, make sure you social distance, wear a mask, don't be a dummy. Um, or go outside where you can to get some sunlight. Vitamin D is very great for the immune system. It's also called the sunshine vitamin for a reason. It makes you happy. Um, and you can also get what's called a happy light. Um, this is a light that you can put inside your house. It's about this big. Um, and you can sit or stand or do something in front of it in the morning and it simulates the sun rays to give you a little bit of, um, it doesn't actually give you vitamin D, but it mimics the feeling of being outside if you can't go outside. Um, also doing something like journaling just to process through a lot of the feelings that are going on. You can do it brain dump stream of consciousness style. No one has to see it. It's just for you. Um, one thing that I've been doing a lot of, which I love, but I've gotten to do it a lot more during this time, um, is reading. I find that the more time I spend off screens, the better I feel because my eyeballs feel like they're burning after being on the computer or on the TV or my phone or all three all day. Um, I would recommend reading nonfiction books so you can kind of like escape to another world um, or doing something like watching a comedy special on Hulu or Netflix, YouTube. There are a ton of free ones. It's great. Um, spend time with your pets hug them, release some oxytocin, that's the feel-good hormone, um, or doing things like trying to stay connected as possible with people. So doing a FaceTime with friends weekly or whenever it is, doing like virtual happy hours with your family or family dinners where you make food and then you say, okay, Sunday, we're all gonna sit down with our computers or phones and we're gonna eat together separate. Um, or doing something like a virtual cooking date with a friend, like you both pick the same recipe, you make it at the same time over FaceTime or you know whatever your video app is, um, or like a virtual book club could be fun. Now is also a really good great time to like learn how to take naps again, if possible. When your kids are napping, maybe you can also nap. Like we all need to find ways to recharge and rejuvenate during this time because if we think about everything that's asking of us right now, our fuel reserves are lower and lower and our starting point every day is much lower than it normally is. So we need to figure out how can we add to our fuel, add to our self-care, lower our stress bucket. Um, one other thing that you can think about is trying to take some things off of your to-do list and stop feeling like you have to be productive to make this quarantine like worth it. Um, and then the last thing that I'll say before we talk a little bit more about nutrition is that um, be mindful of alcohol consumption, be mindful of coffee consumption. And you're like, excuse me, Dana, what? Um, so for example, uh, alcohol is a depressant. If you tend towards depression or feeling depressed, um, please think about moderating your alcoholic consumption lest you start feeling more depressed than a, more than a lot pe a lot of people already are right now. And plus, binging Netflix and drinking and staying up until 2 a.m. just because you work from home and you can, because you don't have to leave your house, is not going to do anything for your stress levels. We need as much quality of sleep as we can muster right now. Sleep is when your body rejuvenates. Sleep is when it resets your hormone levels, your hunger levels, your, you know, everything. This is when we basically repair yourself overnight and alcohol impairs the repair process. Staying up until 2 a.m. means you're already missing out on two REM cycles of sleep, I'm pretty sure, um, and you're gonna feel even crappier the next day. 
and I also mentioned coffee, if you tend towards anxiety, I would also recommend moderating your coffee consumption. If you're having trouble sleeping, I wouldn't drink caffeinated drinks after noon, like 12 p.m., um, because that can ca- caffeine has a half-life of eight hours, so that means that there's still going to be some caffeine in your system until 8 p.m. if you drink it at noon. Um, if you drink it at 4 p.m., that means it's still in your system until midnight, so no wonder you can't fall asleep. But caffeine and coffee in particular, if you tend towards anxiety, and everyone basically has anxiety and a very high level of stress night, right now, it can impair your ability to deal with stress. Coffee, caffeine in particular, um, also releases a dose of cortisol, that stress hormone that we all have running around in very excessive amounts right now. So you don't want to add more to that if possible. Um, Green tea does not do this. So I would recommend going green tea. Not really sure about black tea, but green tea I like for this purpose. Um, So Last thing here before I sign off and tell you guys where to find me and stuff is let's talk about nutrition and how can we use nutrition to manage the stress. So we've already talked about this perspective of abundance, of adding in foods, of adding in nutrition, of trying to get in your nutritional baseline of some fruits and vegetables a day, fats, carbohydrates, all of the things, right? Adding in so that we can hit that baseline instead of thinking about I shouldn't be eating this, taking this out, going on a diet, restricting, none of that stuff. Three things in particular that I would highly recommend you think about adding in where possible, and these can be either in um, supplemental form, they can be in food form, pantry, freezer, fresh, whatever you have access to. Um, Vitamin C here is probably the number one thing that I would recommend to as many people as possible right now. Um, A note on supplements, always check with your healthcare provider, whether that's a doctor, dietitian, nutritionist, whoever it is, to make sure that none of the supplements or nutrients that I'm going to recommend that you look into. I don't want you to think as this is a, this is a recommendation that Dana says I should take 500 milligrams of this. Like no, I'm not your nutritionist unless we start working together, and so I can't do that directly to you via this video because I can't even see you. So when we're thinking about vitamin C, vitamin C is you've heard, extremely important for boosting your immune system. But vitamin C and magnesium, as I mentioned before, are two of the nutrients that are depleted more the more stressed out you are. In the body's coping mechanism for stress, in order to deal with the cortisol influx, in order to deal with the inflammation and deal with all the things that go with an elevation of stress, the body uses up vitamin C, the body uses up magnesium, which are needed for many other things in the body, but it's being taken up to help with the stress response. So basically, the more stressed you are, the more you become depleted in vitamin C and magnesium and also sodium, which is interesting. So if you've been standing up and feeling very low blood pressure or feeling like kind of dizzy, you might be a little bit low on sodium. Um, So thinking about those vitamin C rich foods, um, citrus, cauliflower, potatoes, there are many that you can go into, um, things that are fortified with vitamin C, and then also magnesium, think like chocolate and dark leafy greens, those are the best sources, and then also B vitamins, right? Like a lot of people feel very depleted right now um, with their energy levels, and B vitamins, where you're going to find them naturally, are in things like collagen and bone broth and animal products, so like meat and fish and eggs um, and seafood and stuff like that. Um, in terms of supplements, again, check with your healthcare provider um, before adding any of these things in. Um, Chamomile tea is not necessarily a supplement, but it's something that can really help people relax um, or do something like licorice root tea. Make sure you um, double check with your healthcare provider if you have high blood pressure because there are certain types of licorice that can actually raise your blood pressure. So there's your disclaimer for that. Um, And then looking into something even like, you know, CBD or herbals um, or hemp or anything like that. Um, again, this isn't me saying like, go smoke weed. Um, that would be irresponsible of me as a practitioner, but you know, you do you if it's legal in your state, but doing something like CBD that has the THC removed, there's actually been a lot of research studies recently that I'll link to in that PDF that I was talking about that can help manage anxiety and stress and help you sleep in particular. And it kind of sounds like everyone needs that right now. Um, So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, If you want to find me, you can find me at Real Food with Dana everywhere on Instagram. My website is Real Food with Dana 
uh, com. If you're interested in working with me one on one, I offer 30 minute sessions and also hour long sessions. And I'm kind of coming up with different packages for people based on what they can f- afford during this craziness period of COVID. Um, so you can find all of that on my website or you can email me at realfoodwithdana, all spelled out, at gmail.com. Or my podcast is the Real Talk with Dana podcast. So I will see you guys soon.